well, we seem to have some stuff in here. This was the last resort storage unit where I had to be out of the house in seven hours, so I just basically signed a blank check and said, here's money, give me a spot to put my junk. <laughs> This camera is good. I accidentally left it in the van for a couple of nights and it got down pretty cold outside. I usually like to make sure the stuff doesn't get too cold and then try to turn it on because it fogs up. But anyways, today, uh, well this morning, hopefully a quick project. The wheelchair lift on the bus needs a little bit of repair. It still technically works, but it has a slight problem. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been noticing, usually at night and early in the morning, when it's really cold outside, the thing will raise up and when it gets about even with this bar, it'll stop and then it'll start going again. At first I thought it was the batteries in this remote, so I changed those. Seemed like it helps for a little while, but now it's doing it again. I think we've got a wiring issue. There's two things on this lift that will keep it from operating, even if it's going, even if it's already started moving. And that would be the limit switch for this barrier flap here. If that thing moves or that limit switch gets triggered, it'll stop. The other thing is over here, which I already defeated, was what used to be the seat belt or the, um, what would you call it? The strap, the strap that they pull across from one side to the other. But as you can see, the railing over here has been removed and that had that buckle on it and I've tied up the wiring and that thing's fine. So it leads me to believe my problem's on this side. We've got two sets of wires running from that side and also from this side. I got to looking around down here and I noticed we've got a fairly significant bundle of wires that are all zip tied up here. But then I looked down in here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but there's a wire that goes from there into this arm and it has a little bit of a twist in it. I think what happened when this was installed or something or other, the wire that comes in through here got a little bit of a twist and then it goes up. And over time, as that's flexing with that twist in it, I think it's internally broken some of the conductors. Let me let me put this lift in and open up this door, and I think I can show you a little bit better what's going on. So our main carriage sub-control box is here. This is what controls everything on the carriage. There's a couple of motors to go in and out and it sends a signal over to the main controller box that houses the hydraulic pump and everything. But as you can see, we've got a lot of wires that come out here. And what I've done is I've sat right here and run the lift up and down when it stops. And then I poke at this little bit of wiring right here and it'll make it stop or start again. So what we need to do is basically make that wire so it comes straight through and over. The way this lift works is there's two arms on each side that are on a pivot and they kind of cross slide inside this mechanism. And that wire is basically going between those two. I'm assuming it's clipped off somewhere along the way or like fastened somehow. But it comes up and out right here and into this little box. Then over here we've got some limit switches. I don't know, I think there might be a channel underneath that runs to that side because the motor for that little barrier flap is on that side and the cable that comes up over there is only responsible for the inhibit for that old seatbelt buckle. So I think what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab my Allen keys and we're gonna pop this little panel off right here because it looks like the wire goes right in and then we're gonna take a look and see what's going on in there. In theory, what I might be able to do is if there's enough slack, I can pull that wire through, cut it, solder everything back together and put it back into place. Because I think there's maybe one conductor or something in there that got screwed up in that wire. I think there's probably at least five or six conductors in there. Worst case scenario, we can bypass that circuit. It's actually starting to sprinkle just a little bit right now. I was gonna try and get this done before the rain started. But um, anyways, we're gonna, we're gonna pull this little panel off right here and have a look. Actually, if you notice, there's one screw missing. So I think someone's been in here. Ah uh, yes, there is evidence of someone stripping on these screws. So I'm curious to see what we're going to find inside this little box. Yeah, well that's simple enough. 
we just have the wire coming in and it goes to a connector. That's actually super handy for servicing purposes. And let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six conductors in there. Okay. Um, oh, and look at this. We have some slack. Oh, is this really gonna be this easy? Yeah, so this is enough slack that we can just pull that wire through. I'm gonna have to cut some of these zip ties here where everything's tied off, but there's enough slack there where I can pull that damage section all the way up into here and maybe get to it and work on it a little bit easier. Um, see, I'm just trying to calculate here what the rain's gonna be doing. I, I need to leave it so I can put the lift back in if it starts raining really hard. I don't need to get back into the bus though right now. I've got everything I need out here as far as tools, but it's gonna be a balance between uh, rain and whatever. So um, I'm going to cut these off and take a look real quick and then I'll be back when I find something or some sort of solution here. So I can't really see this connector down in here, so... Oh yeah, okay, so... Looks like we can push those tabs in and potentially get that wire freed up. But yeah, you can tell there, we've definitely got some abrasion and wires that are not super happy. So I'm gonna see if I can get in there with a screwdriver and get that freed. And by the way, at this point, I have cut power to the lift. Of course, it doesn't help that it's really cold out here, so all this stuff is super stiff. All right, there's a bit of a good news, bad news scenario here. Good news is there's enough extra cable here that I can pull this all the way through and get that damage section to come up out here. But bad news, this cable seems to be pretty firmly affixed inside there and I cannot pull it through. Also, when I pulled the lift up just now, I got to looking under here and check it out. We've got what looks like some visible bare wires here. I can't quite tell if those are damaged, but I would bet money that our problem has something to do with that or maybe even right here. You can see how things are a little bit screwy. So this is definitely one of those moments that I like when you can say, oh, well, there's your problem. As far as solving it though, I'm not quite sure. In the interest of not getting soaked, I'm gonna put the camera down and get to work on this and then I'll let you know what I come up with. Okay, so I threw a foam mat on the ground. We got the clip out of there. Wire, as you can see, is a little bit not happy. So now I just have to unhook whatever clip is up here if I can get to it, and then we should be able to pull this all through. Okay, this is taking a pretty serious amount of screwing around. I had to lift, pull the lift up all the way because where this wire goes through is on the bottom of this arm. And uh, I was just able to reach through with two screwdrivers, one in here and another one coming down here to pop that little grommet loose. Uh, I don't even know if that's in focus or not, but you can see it right there. Um, yeah, I got the bottom one out. We've got all that wire down there. So in theory now, I should be able to pull it all through. Yeah, and look at that. Right where the grommet was, this wire is also broken. So this lift was installed, I think in 2012. But as you can see, they try to put some weather sealing on there, but all the flexing combined with these smashing style grommets has resulted in this wire breaking. Okay, cool. Now if I pull on this, you can see our wire moving down there a little bit. And I found a couple access holes here so I can kind of see what's going on in there. All right, cool. We're not out of the woods yet, but we're getting somewhere. Oh boy, did I get lucky. So we've used up almost all of our stash of wire there, but check it out. Here's our damage section. You can see how this got twisted. And as it was flexing up and down right here, that twist started rubbing on things. And uh, yeah, so something in here is definitely broken. So we've got just enough to deal with this. I'll be able to cut that off and reattach our connector. And I'm gonna get this part straightened up down here. This wiring is pretty old though. 
and I don't really like these bends. So at some point we're probably gonna have to actually rewire this. But for now, I think we're gonna be good. Okay, we've got enough wire pulled through here now. We can kind of investigate this a little bit. I'm probably gonna trim it down here somewhere. But for right now, I wanna peel some of the sheathing back and see if we can find the actual aha moment where there's a broken wire. And I think what I'm gonna do, instead of reusing these hard mount clips to hold the wire, I'm just gonna put some sheathing over it because these things hold the wire so tight that it forces it to flex in a very specific point. And it doesn't really matter if water gets down in there anyways because the rest of it's not sealed. And I think allowing that wire to kind of slide back and forth and not be hard flexed is gonna make it last longer. Because as you can see, this wire is not in very good shape from years of temperature differential and everything. Yeah, see it just snaps right off. Also doesn't help that it's a little bit cold out here today. So these wires here look okay. Let's go the other direction here a little bit and see what we can find. Oh, I think I found it. Yeah, so I think we've got some internally broken wires here. If you look real close at this black one right here, see if I can get, uh, put something white behind it. It's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but see right here how there's a really tight kink in that wire? From my experience, that is enough to make it intermittently not connect on the inside. Yeah, see? Yep. See how that folds over? That is an internally broken wire. See how it completely bends over with no resistance? That's our broken wire right there. And this red one here looks like it's about to go as well. It's probably still got a few strands connected, but I'm gonna dissect the sheathing on there. I'm curious to see how broken it actually is. I'm just gonna cut these sections out real quick. Yeah, you can see these other wires here. These have a little bit of a bulge, but they don't they don't flex over. They still have some structure left to them. Oh, and it's aluminum wire too. Yep. Here it is. If you look right here, you can see those strands of wire poking out. And down inside there, there's no strands left. There's one little strand right down there. So as this flexes like this, it'll connect. But when it bends up like this, we're gonna have a break. So yeah, there you go. Cool. Gotten pretty lucky with the rain here. But anyways, now that we've found our problem, where'd that piece of wire go? There it is. But yeah, now that we've found our problem, I'm going to go ahead and trim this off because that black connector basically plugs in right here. So we're gonna make that just long enough so I have a little bit of a loop here. And then we will get this put back together. Then I'm gonna wrap some sheathing around this and shove it down here. Uh, there's another hole inside here. It's back in this area that it goes through. And then same thing down here. I'll show you what I mean though with this wire. It's pretty old. You can see this piece here has got a pretty hefty bend to it. It looks a lot worse on camera, but at least the section that's going through here now is completely straight. And the next knot or bend like that is actually up inside here. So not using one of those hard mount clamps is gonna allow that to slide in and out. Obviously there will be a little bit of abrasion going on, but that's what the sheathing that I'm gonna put over the, edge, uh, over the top of it is gonna help with. But I think it's gonna make this crappy wire last a lot longer. I will at some point have to completely rewire this. Um, it would probably make sense to do that now, but I don't have any of this wire at the moment. So now that I know how to do it though, it won't be too big of a deal. All right, well, I'm gonna get this done. I'll be back. Okay, some time has passed. We're on the home stretch. I've got all the wires soldered up here. Turns out it's cold enough out here and trying to heat this aluminum wire 
my 140 watt soldering iron I was having a heck of a time it took about three or four minutes to solder each one of these some of them look pretty atrocious but I can assure you there are no cold solders there the other thing too is my heat shrink is inside that luggage bay which there's absolutely no way I can get to right now so we're just going to have to electrical tape all these which is kind of annoying it's a lot nicer to use heat shrink but hey whatever um, I'm gonna continue on here about ready to plug this back in and start putting things back together yay still can't believe it hasn't rained yet okay we have our connections done in here um, I've got everything set up so that if water does get in here it's not going to pool in the connectors this is not completely sealed but this little cover kind of goes on here which helps a bit so yeah reassembly time okay piles of tools we've gotten some anti-abrasion stuff installed down there and some more zip ties let's see if it works okay it goes down and goes up sweet i think we're good cool well i guess now i can put everything back together and give it a test run okay not quite sure how long i've been out here but i'm done being in the cold so let's check this real quick got all of our covers back on everything's cleaned up what i want to do is run the lift up and down and keep an eye on this wire slack down here pretty sure we're going to be fine but just for no reason make sure our barrier plate works Okay, looks like we're good. And yeah, so all the holes that go into these things are very rounded off. I mean, I don't know if you can see this one here, but it's super smooth. So I think the failure mode is actually those clips they were using to get the wires in here. This wire is not gonna be sliding in and out. It'll basically move or touch a little bit, but as this lift goes up and down, it's not gonna slide in and out. So I just added some abrasion protection on the wire and I'm just gonna leave it float in there. It's not going to get caught on anything, so yeah, let's run it up. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. All right, cool. I, uh, I deemed this thing fixed. I'm going to hop on, grab some stuff out of the bus, and uh, probably sit by the fire and warm up. Oh man, so I woke up this morning, hang on, pause, okay, I woke up this morning with a lot of motivation but not a lot of energy, so I'm confident this is going to be one of those days that I will regret for tomorrow and the next day and probably the day after that, but we're getting some stuff done in here. It's an absolute disaster area, so anyways, I'm working on finishing framing and putting plywood on the electrical cabinet here. I've got some crossboards installed. We installed the plywood there. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, this is going to be covered with diamond plate, aluminum. This doesn't really get very hot, but just in case we have a little bit of a gap here. Um, and also I'm gonna put some metal on that. We've got the electrical panel roughed in here. I've got some of the conduit running down here to an outlet and a junction box. And I'm gonna be putting another outlet probably up under here and then I will be powering the stove off of that. And moving towards the back here, we're working on uh, building up a, what you call it, solid wall or whatever for this rear window here. Now, I am going a bit overboard with this one window. I'm going to do this one here a lot lighter weight without two by sixes. And also the one that is going over here behind the shower. Actually, it'll be this window here and then this section of window here. This was already in the bathroom, so it's partway frosted. The bathroom wall used to be right here, but that's gone now. Anyways, I'm going to cover that over the rest of the way. Well, I haven't decided yet. I might leave this back portion so the window can still open and then cover up this section and behind the shower. But anyways, we're getting some stuff done here. I'll show you the basic concept real quick. So what I'm gonna be doing, I've already got one of them tentatively in here. We've got two by sixes. We're going to be putting one along the bottom here, another one along the top, and then another one in the middle. I want to be able to mount a ton of weight on this. Well, 
I probably won't be, but I want the option to, because when I connect the counter in for the kitchen here, I'm not 100% sure yet if I'm going to be putting a cabinet up there or like a microwave or a toaster oven or I don't know, something. So I want to leave myself with options. I'm really overbuilding this particular section. But the way we're doing this, I'm drilling out holes in these steel uprights and putting in these threaded metal inserts. And that allows me to bolt the boards directly on here with some washers and whatnot. So we've got this bottom one here pretty much done. And I wanted to get the bottom one done, and then I've got a spacer board I can use to hold the other one up there. The way I've been doing this is putting the boards up and eyeballing where it goes, and then drilling through the board, and then making marks in that steel piece. Then I pull the board back off and use the appropriate series of drill bits to get the hole just the right size for the threaded metal inserts. And uh, yeah, the back's a little bit annoying. I have to kind of sit up on top of this thing to get to that. But these threaded metal inserts are really cool. It uses one of these rivet guns and there's a bunch of attachments that came with it for different sizes. But basically we have these little guys here. They go into the wall and then there's these little striations that crush. And then you have a threaded thing that goes into the wall. Actually here, I've got a couple that I screwed up. This is what they look like after they've been smashed. So to compare the two, you can kind of see there how those things crush up and then grip onto the surface that you put them into. I'm taking a little bit of a break right now. After drilling all these holes and stuff, I'm a little bit, I guess I have a light right here. I'm a little bit winded, obviously, because a lot of work. But I'm gonna push through it today, get as much of this done as we can. And the reason I'm spacing it out is so that the upper wall portion lines up with the lower wall down below. I'm leaving this bottom section in here because it's already insulated and there's no reason to tear that apart and do anything else. We've got these tunnels on the bottom anyways, so it's not like, well, anyways, it's just how I've decided to do it. So this is going to come out. It'll be a little bit proud of the wall, but that's fine. That's going to leave me with some space to put things down here. I haven't decided if I'm putting cabinets in here yet. I probably won't so I have room to get into the bathroom area. I want the floor to just be completely open right here. But again, I'm kind of building things as I go along. That's that's how I do stuff. So there is some planning involved, but the main reason I'm attacking this right now is I started, is I started running my electrical and took this next piece of conduit up and run it to the back. I need to get that back area finished. I think I showed this in another video. I, I don't remember, they're not live right now but I'm gonna be connecting another piece of conduit here. And this is just a convenient junction box. I don't need an outlet right here, but it will be handy. And it's also gonna be good for connecting another piece of conduit. But that's gonna run along the bottom of the wall back here, and then that'll provide our power for the kitchen area. But you can kind of see what that looks like here. I've got the conduit running along the bottom of the wall, and it's clipped in place, so that's not going anywhere. Make it easier to uh, do things with it later if I need to. Then it comes along and goes into this box here. Now working with rigid conduit is a little bit of a trick. So I went and grabbed some of this flexible conduit. This is half inch. I'm using three quarter for that stuff because I'm running uh, two circuits through it. But this stuff here is going to make it a lot easier to um, do more complex bends and whatnot for installing outlets and all that. But anyways, for now, that's what's going on. I'm going to put down the camera and continue working. I, uh, Need to get as much stuff done before my muscles realize what's happening. <laughs> Well, I've made it to the point that I need to buy some more stuff before I can continue. So I think for today we're going to call it good. Sun's going to go down here in a little bit and it's going to start getting dark. So I need to clean up all my tools and everything that's laying everywhere. I had to move everything out of the cabinet that was back there and off the shelf and put it in these bins. So yeah, a little bit of clutter, but we've got two boards on here and I need to get a, uh, I need to get a few more of the threaded metal inserts. And also I need to get the film to go over the window. I'm not going to be putting insulation in there. The windows are double paned already, but we're going to have a nice pocket of air trapped in there with some plywood over it. And well, honestly, the best insulator that exists is air. So I think I'm just going to leave it at that for now. I don't really have too much of an issue with heat getting through here. Obviously, there's radiant heat loss, which is a thing. 
but that's very easily taken care of with curtains or in this case a piece of plywood but I'm gonna grab some stuff to put on that window to completely black it out that way you can't see anything weird from the outside and it'll just look like a really really dark tinted window from the outside and uh, yeah can't think of anything else right now I figured I would show this real quick it's not inherently obvious because I'm always inside the bus filming out but these windows are already very tinted they are very very dark as you can see you can just barely see the outline of the 2x6 there on the bottom. But I just wanted to show from the outside what that actually looks like. Because it's a little hard to tell from the inside. If we pan up to the front where the driver's window is, there you can see there's no tint on that window. But as we go back, the front windows have a little bit of tint. And then from here all the way back, the rest of them are very dark. But I'm still going to go ahead and put some covering over the inside of that window just so in broad daylight or direct sunlight or whatever you won't be able to see the wood framing or whatever that's in there. But it's nice having the wheelchair lift fixed. It didn't ever completely stop working but it would stop sometimes and when the pump turns on and off it can cause cavitation in the hydraulic oil and you get air bubbles in the line and then I have to like bleed stuff off and whatever. So anyway, so it's nice having that wire fixed. Lift's working good now. And even in the colder weather with that proper aviation uh, hydraulic oil, it doesn't seem to be getting thicker and the lift doesn't have any problems working when it's, you know, below freezing outside. But anyways, I think we're gonna call it a day. I'm not sure how long this video is, but probably long enough. So I will see you guys tomorrow for the live stream, which is Thursday. I'm assuming I'm gonna publish this Wednesday, which is today. Anyways, I'll see you soon.